Hey everybody, I'm recording this in front of the video because I just wanted to give the forewarning that I end up talking about a lot of terms before we actually get into showing what the actual first, second, and third block string for you new players are. And so if you have no intentions of wanting to learn or try to find out what those other terms are and why they're important, you can just go ahead and click below for the description to actually get into the first, second, and third block string that I end up going over if that's all what you're concerned about. So hopefully that helps you skip a bunch of stuff um, if you have no intentions of wanting to learn that. But I still think that the other points that I end up talking about are critically important, especially if this is one of your first fighting games or if you're brand new to something like Dragon Ball Fighters. So hope you enjoy the video. Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. This video is going to be focusing on block strings and sort of getting into mix-ups in regards to how you can apply that to your block strings. So first thing that I want to go over is what a block string is and why you want to actually focus on block strings. So a block string basically is when somebody is on defense whenever they're starting to block your attacks and you are going to continuously throw out attacks that chain together. So as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos going from light to medium to heavy attacks even into a special or quarter circle forward sort of special move, movement or ability and trying to get some sort of opening to start leading into a combo. So that's the main reason why you want to be familiar with block strings so that you're not just throwing out your auto combos and you actually keep more constant and longer pressure. Now you can throw in certain things like mitts ups and assists to help extend your block strings and hopefully try and open up your opponent, but we'll get into that in just a little bit. Now I want to make sure to go over a bit of terms to help familiarize, make you familiar with certain things that will be important. So certain things that are going to be important in terms of attacks are going to be stuff like your startup, which is going to be whenever that attack is getting ready to actually be thrown out. Now, let me go ahead and get into the game so we can kind of go over startup and active and then the recovery frame for certain things, because this is going to be extremely important and I actually want to show you guys that. So basically startup, as I mentioned, is going to be whenever that an attack is getting ready to be wound up and actually be active. And then after the attack hits, or if it is going to whiff or be blocked, whatever that may be, then you're going to have like your recovery for that. So lighter attacks, which are going to be with the Etz button, if you're on Etz bots, if you're on a sort of uh, fighting stick, I don't know what you have that bound to, but if you're on the dual shot four, I believe that is going to be your square because triangles at the top and circles to the right. So that should be your square. So medium attacks are going to have a moderate amount of startup and then active frames and then also have a longer recovery and then follow that with the heavy attacks, which are going to have the longest startup, the most active frames, and then also have the biggest recovery. So where does all of this kind of come into with going into block strings and why is that important? Well, with block strings, you are going to have something that is going to call block stun, and then considering that you actually have a hit, then you're going to have hit stun. So hit stun, and I'll go into this and then we'll kind of come back to block strings. Uh, so hit stun, if you look over here, we're right above Goku, you see that there is the combo damage and then there's gonna be the stun time. So let me make sure that the computer's not set to block. So you'll notice that whenever we hit with a light attack, there's a small little bar that kind of pops up and then it depletes pretty quickly. So that is your opportunity to be able to go into another attack, considering that you're able to chain it to the previous attack. So if you throw out a light attack, you can throw out another light attack before the bar actually totally depletes. And then if you throw out two lights, then you can go into medium. And then after that, then you can even go into heavy afterwards. And then the main thing that I want to focus on here is for the blot stun and the hit stun. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you exactly the blot stun in terms of a gauge because it's not available through the game. But let's look at how fast the bar actually deteriorates whenever you have a light attack. And it goes pretty quickly after you actually make contact there. Now, with the heavy attack, though, that bar went pretty slow. I don't think that I even need to slow that down in order for you to be able to tell the difference between those two. It's pretty noticeable. Same thing with the two heavy. You have time to be able to get up there with your super dash and whatnot, so it's pretty good in terms of being able to keep people blocked. I'm sorry, locked up to be able to chain into combos. So hit stun is going to be, as mentioned, whenever that attack actually connects and starts doing damage to the opponent. Block stun is going to be the exact same thing, but you are going to have time in between attacks to be able to go into another attack, considering that it chains in the same way. So let's change Gohan to be able to guard all, and then we're also going to set him to be able to reflect, because we want to be able to show that whenever there's any sort of gap. So we'll 
chain to the other or tap in the exact same way, going light to heavy. And then Gohan has a reflect. Now, if there's any sort of gaps in there of any kind, then that is going to be exploited, and we'll show that with Gohan actually reflecting us backwards. So we put just a tiny little gap in between the light attacks, so that's not us having zero gap, or if you could see the bar, then it would be depleting, and the bar actually would have totally depleted, but our attack can still chain into the next one. So that little bit of gap right there, that is something that you're going to need to keep in mind in terms of your blocks your blot strings so that whenever somebody's in blot stun they actually can't get out of that with something like a vanish and then the next thing that we can go into is something like a reflect and more importantly which is a term you might not be familiar with is going to be reversals so reversals are going to be something known as uh, dps and also level threes in this game which if you're not familiar with what a dp is that's a dragon punch and so a reversal if you're still a little bit lost for exactly what that means Basically, it's a move that turns the tides for the other person that was blocking. So it's a way for reversing who's actually on offense and defense. That's the best way I could put it. I struggled a little bit when I first started as well for exactly what a reversal means. And I, I had a hard time understanding it. But let's show Gohan whenever that he is able to actually have a reversal put in because you have a gap in your string and, and what that shows. Hopefully, he's on the correct one. He's not. Let's turn him the other way. That should be here. So right there is going to be his uppercut. And that is going to be invincible considering that you have a gap in your string. Whether it's your uh, attach string or your blot string. Whatever that it may be. Um, if you leave a gap of some kind he is going to be able to get in there. And you can even see it over where he is over here by his character. That it's actually going to also say reversal. Which is going to lead into an attack that he can actually open you up with. So, why is all of this important and, and why do we need to know all of these terms and everything for blot stun, for hit stun, and whatnot? Well, when you're going through your attacks, depending on the character, if it's somebody like Adult Gohan, if it's somebody like Cooler, like Teen Gohan, because all of these characters actually have reversals, and we will show that. There. So right there, I'm going to have a DP in the same way that adult gohan had it for team gohan and there it is again you were able to see kind of the gap being left in there even though our attacks kind of chain into one another now let's actually go into a level three and show how that's a reversal as well i believe it should be this one that is not it is going to be this one so if you leave a gap for level threes as well in the same way that if a character has a DP, which is also known as a reversal, uh, which is going to have invincible frames on startup, that you have to be cautious whenever that you're throwing out attacks or trying to open up your opponent. So right here, if you were able to see, our punch for Goku was still actually going through, but because you have invulnerable frames on startup for the level three, and we can show it better with the heavy attack whenever his foot for Goku is going to come all the way out and look like it's basically connecting with Gohan, but the invulnerable frames are going to allow him to actually still be able to connect. So if you look, Goku has his leg already out and extended, and I will show that a few more times. And the attack is out, but because there's that gap in there that didn't transition correctly, or fast enough, I should say, to keep Gohan in plot stun to be able to get into that heavy attack, you can do things like a level 3 in that way. Um, so this is going to be important for people like Cooler as well. Uh, since he does actually have a counter on the ground, so if you're going to actually throw that out, then he has the time to actually get off the counter so that he can actually just spam that and then be able to turn the tides on you. So you need to be very careful depending on the character that you see, and you also want to keep in mind the amount of bars that the opponent actually has. So you can keep in mind the amount of bars that the opponent has, but more importantly, also keep in mind how much health that you actually have in a situation. So if you're under half health, and most level 3s end up doing about high 3000s and then can potentially go up into the mid uh, 4000s. So some of them can stretch up in there quite a bit. So if your character is under half health, your character sitting at about maybe 30, 40%, something like that, and that a simple level three can kill and the opponent has the opportunity to do so, you need to be extremely cautious for when you're actually going to want to throw that out. Now, I know I went over kind of a bit there, but there are other important things for you to understand is that most of the time when you're playing against an actual opponent, you have to consider 
how they're actually playing as well. So depending on how they're playing, if they're playing extremely reserved, if you see that when they like to block, they always like to block low, like Goku is here, or if they always like to just go back and they don't typically block their leads, then you can know what sort of attacks you can use to actually exploit people. So if somebody like Cooler on the opposite team, and I noticed that he always likes to just block low, which let's block him crouching, and we will have him guard all, but we will not have him switch. So he's going to be like that. So let's actually turn off the counter as well. So if we notice that he's actually just blocking consistently and we call out an assist and everything like that, well, what can we actually do to try and open him up? Well, you have to go with something that's an overhead attack, which is something that I had mentioned before in terms of actually um, being on offense and, and different areas and ways that attacks hit. So you're going to have to hit with some sort of aerial attack. Now, something that I haven't gone over in depth in terms of how you can practice it and whatnot is going to be an IAD, which is going to be an instant air dash. And that's going to be a way that you can actually go over the opponent. So if they are blocking, then you can get an aerial attack. And then you're also going to fall to the ground extremely quick so that you can follow up with a full string. Now, as I mentioned, when you're facing an actual opponent, considering that they're able to see the gap that you have in your attacks and everything, then this is an option that they have to be able to counter you with the uh, with the dragon punch, with the reversal. So it's something that you have to keep in mind for sure, but considering that you're able to actually use it correctly, so if you were able to do this, and then you try to go for another, oh, I am sorry, let's actually have him blocked for the switch. Let me put him in the corner so I don't mess up anymore. So if you were to go IED and then try to go for another IED overhead, because there are people that will spam that, considering that you don't have something that's going to reverse or if you don't vanish out of that. So we can even show somebody getting out of it with a vanish. And there we go. And then, of course, somebody could also reflect that, considering that they are able to see something like that. So these are where the gaps are punishable, but considering that you aren't able to actually exploit the gaps in a way that the opponent could actually take advantage, then I mean, the opponent's kind of free to do whatever that they want to for that. I believe that the computer would even be able to do a down B if I could find that. Ah, it's a crouching heavy attack for that. And for that and so that's actually going to count as a counter and of course it's a smash attack because you had the attack coming out already so this is where covering yourself and not being overly predictable if you always like to go for overhead attacks or if you always like to go for low attacks uh, that the opponent might be able to counter that or always be able to block your attacks considering that you have no mitts ups now i'm not going to get too much into the mitts ups in terms of trying to go left to right up and down and whatnot but i do want to give you three block strings which should hopefully help you understand keeping pressure on your opponent and since this is more focused for beginners and everything like that i will have more advanced mitts ups and whatnot in a later video um, but this one's going to be mostly focused on beginner stuff just because i wanted to cover all of these terms ahead of time for everything and then kind of go into it later so Let's start going into practicing your first block string and for what that's going to entail exactly. So let me just make sure I covered everything. I have a list over here that I had actually put a bunch of information for. We had gone over the startups, active and the recovery frames, uh, block stun, hit stun, what the difference between those two are. And just to recap it, block stun is when somebody's actually blocking and the amount of time that you have to go in between attacks before they can actually attack. And then same thing for hit stun, but that's going to be more once you actually are to confirm a hit that you can actually go into your next attack. So we covered vanish to, or I'm sorry, being careful with gaps in your attack because then the opponent will have the opportunity to exploit that considering that they actually do see it, which is if you were to leave something, oops, I'm sorry, if they were to guard all, if they have enough time to be able to actually vanish out of that, uh, then they can also do a reflect out of that. Do, do, do. Like that. Um, or some sort of reversal, which should be this one. That is indeed that one. And then even for a level three, as we had mentioned. Such as that. 
So those are all things to be careful for with gaps. But just reiterating it one more time is that when you're facing a real opponent, considering that you are not able to react fast enough because fighting games are extremely quick, these are all going to be options that you can actually use in your favor in terms of staggering sort of attacks. So you can throw out a light attack, then wait and throw out the same light attack because the recovery on the faster attacks is going to be less. So light attacks have a lot less recovery time that you can actually just go straight back into the same attack before actually progressing through your string, such as that. So that might be something that you would actually want to try. And we can kind of show that in terms of without having the reversal. So you could throw out light, 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 like that. And then considering that your opponent was thinking, ah, he's going to keep going through his string, then they might try to push a button of some kind. So if somebody actually tries to do an attack, like a light attack, but you're just kind of staggering here just a little bit, then you can actually open them up. So that little bit of time in between is going to be extremely important considering that you are going to want to actually stagger yourself, but you have to be very careful in terms of how much that you stagger. Um, if they sniff it out and then you take too long to actually go into your next attack, you will actually see something like this, which is where... Let me try this. So right there you have a clash, so that means we were extremely close to getting the tides turned on us. And then if you take way too long, then you will actually just get beat out by somebody that's maybe mashing an attack. But this is going to create what's known as a frame trap. <clears throat> Considering that you're staggering your attacks and your opponent thinks that it's their turn. So the point of a frame trap, or more what it is exactly, is that your opponent notices a gap and they try to do a move or an attack that is going to actually be counter on themselves. Um, so that's how a frame trap can be beneficial to you. So if you're thinking, well, let me kind of stagger myself just a little bit right here, and then you end up opening up somebody, and then you can get a full combo or whatnot. So that's an option if you notice that your opponent you believe is starting to read or, or is a masher on wake up or something like that, that you can actually just stagger some of your hits in that way so that whatever that they are pushing a button, then you can actually open them up. So I believe we kind of covered a good bit of everything in terms of what we kind of want to go through and certain things that we want to define. So let me start getting you into your first block string. Um, I guess the second one would be called like a beginner block string since we're going to incorporate an assist with that. And then the intermediate block string, which is going to take advantage of high and low mitts ups there. So as I mentioned, we're not going to get too crazy because something like an IAD, which is the instant air dash, which is this motion right here, is not something that actually comes extremely easily. It's something that you are definitely going to have to practice. And so I don't want to throw that in there just yet. We can get more into that in terms of a bunch of mix ups. Um, there are other videos that I thought were extremely good, which I will link to down below. One of them is by Bay Rudy, and then also you can check out the Turtle Hermit School, is what I believe it was called exactly. Um, the Turtle Hermit School does have their own website and everything like that. They don't have a ton of videos that I can remember. I actually haven't been following with them too much recently um, for a lot of things, but I know on their website they do have a lot of um, kind of cycling videos that's on, I believe it's called GifCat. I, I really don't know how you actually pronounce it. Um, but that would be something that might also be another tool to kind of help you go through a bunch of things. So. I'll make sure to link to those down below to give you other resources as well. But so let's get into the very first block string and how that's kind of going to work. So if you remember from my very first video, or considering that you actually can comprehend this, and that's not trying to be mean or anything like that, just making sure that you understand, is that going to be uh, you progress through your attacks, which are going to be light, medium, into heavy. And then depending on how the attack is exactly, is that you can actually go into a special type of move. So a special being like a key blast, maybe a command maya, if not something like that, then a quarter circle forward, quarter, quarter circle back. Um, but you want to keep in mind, as mentioned, if the attack is going to be beneficial for you or if you know how to convert off of that. So counter attacks, we won't have any of that. So safe things that you can do and the most important things that you have to watch out for as mentioned are going to be reversals which that is a level one that is definitely not a reversal that is still the level one. Oh, it's this one there we go so something like that and then making sure that there's a gap in there in some way so let's actually get adult gohan since he actually attacks and it's not a counter all right so something like this so a light jab, because it has such a low recovery time, and it's at, I'm sorry, because the active 
The startup active and then the hit stun for it are low, but the recovery on it is also very fast for you. So if you were to just throw out two jabs and then go into a block, you're going to be able to have a little bit of time to actually recover here. Now, as mentioned, if you leave a gap in here that the opponent can actually exploit, then you're not going to be able to block because they're attacking you in the middle of your attack. So you're actually still in the active part of your attack. So, all right, so the easiest thing that you can actually do in terms of going through your very, very first block screen is just cycling through all of your attacks. Now, you want to be careful, as mentioned, for any sort of openings that you have and what may or may not be a true block screen. So... As I mentioned, certain characters will be able to actually finish with certain moves. Some of them will actually be safe to finish with the heavy attack for the ending. Some of them will not be safe for that. Um, so we can kind of demonstrate that as well. So let's go into the reversals for whenever that's going to be the case. And so let's see if Goku is going to be an option for this. Now, you can set this up yourself. You can just set the settings to guard all to... You can actually have it to standing and then make sure that it switch or however you kind of want to have the opponent start and then make sure that the counter attack setting is going to be quarter circle forward and then the rb now that's going to be relative to you the player so it's pretending that you're actually executing this on the player one side because realistically it's supposed to be quarter circle back and then the rb but that's how the settings are going to work out as far as for the recording function so let's do light light into medium medium and then into heavy and then end with a block and then considering that things are well we should be able to block this and we are now let's see a couple of other things that we can maybe end with can we end it with maybe like a t blast so that we leave are able to looks like goku was already blocking so that's good so let's try something like a command maya to end so that is going to be punished because that was not a true block string. So we could try something like that overhead, but that is also going to be punished because it is not a true block string. So something simple that you can do for your very first block string is just going to be going through all of your basic attacks, which is going to be the light, medium, heavy, and then you can get into the block right after that. So it's important that you know when you are and are not opening up your opponent. By the time that you get around to the medium attacks, more or less, if your opponent is not being opened up, that is where you have to start making the decision for what you want to do for your next attack. Now, this is where after this first block stream, which as mentioned is going through the lights, medium, heavy, and then even into a T-Blast is going to um, be important and kind of vary. So let's switch to someone like Goku Black. Now, every character is going to have different finishers for what a safe block string is. So let's do the exact same thing and end with the heavy and see if that's going to be safe for Goku Black. So we're trying to block right now. And it does seem that that's going to be safe. Now let's try to end with the key blast in the same way that Goku, Super Saiyan Goku was able to. Ooh, I already left a gap in there. So that is not safe. So let's see what another option might be. We're going into a quarter circle forward after that key blast because you're able to cancel into that is actually an option. So this is going to vary from character to character exactly what your options are going to be. But this is a good way that you can actually practice it. You can come into the training mode. You can set the counter attack settings to be something with a dragon punch, something like adult Gohan. You can do teen Gohan, or you could do Super Saiyan Vegeta since Super Saiyan Vegeta is going to have his quarter circle back and then a light or the medium. And those are going to be DPs as well. So let's look at what Vegeta can maybe do. Light, light, medium, medium, heavy, key blast. And that looks to be safe. We saw him crouching already. So you're good on that. Can we just end with the heavy if we want it to? I want to say you can. Just barely it seems. So what are other options? Let's see if we could do a core circle forward or something. So we were able to get all that off and actually still block. We're in the air, but we were able to block. So Hopefully that these are able to give you good ideas for what you can and can't do with the team that I recommended. If you watched my other video, this team is actually able to just end all of their block strings with going through light, medium, and then end with the heavy, and then you're safe on all of those. 
Now, as you saw, Goku can end with a Chi Blast, but not something like a Kamehameha or a Quarter Circle Forward. Goku Black can actually go into the Chi Blast, which isn't a Chi Blast, it's kind of like his projectile that's with the special button and then go into a quarter circle forward since the key blast for him is not safe and then for vegeta he has all the same options except you can also do the quarter circle forward motion um so you have basically three enders for vegeta is to end with the heavy to end with the key blast or to end with the quarter circle forward motion so that's basically your first block string so that you can kind of see exactly what you got going on now getting into converting anything like that now, unfortunately, the computer isn't that great for actually practicing this. If you set them to guard at random, it's more whenever that you have gaps in your strings and what you actually are going to be able to pick up on. So this is where the counterattack setting, even if you set that to nothing, isn't really going to be true. So there he gets opened up early. He's not going to actually stop blocking right in the middle of anything. So is he actually going to start like right away? or ever block i'm sorry ever get opened up so now he actually got opened up but that was just by random in terms of for the block but as you're noticing he's never going to stop blocking in the middle of the attack so you're not able to actually see if he will he is set to block okay so you're never going to be able to actually get a hit in with like the second part of your auto attack or with the second medium or the first medium so just make sure that you come in here you set them to not guard and then you practice confirming certain hits off of your different portions of your block strength so if that was a little confusing it's more saying well i missed the first one so and you can space yourself just a little bit away and say ah the second attack hit for my auto combo how can i continue my combo from there which if you are following along with the videos that i'm putting out then you know that you can go into this combo and if this is a little too advanced for you then you can just cycle through your other attacks go into 2h and just go light 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 and then put them on the ground for a sliding knockdown. down and then other things to go through and to familiarize yourself with is that if they are going to be blocking that if you mash only double medium attacks that you're going to have your standing one first and then your low second now you can control the rate or i'm sorry the timing at which that comes out if you manually input the low option so you can go light light and then manually input the 2m to be able to do that first and then go into your standing m so if you want to find out how you can convert that then make sure that you do a standing m and then you know that you already lose the used the low one so you actually can't go standing into low so you have to think okay well if this is going to be my second part of it then i can go high into a 2h since a 2h is going to be a heavy attack which would be nets in terms of the light medium heavy in terms of the progression forward for any sort of combos then you go into a standing medium into something like a two heavy and then just do light 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 or if you're getting familiar with the jump cancels and whatnot then you can do something such as this for a little bit more damage and then other parts too is if you want to whiff your two lights and then you say okay well what's after that well my mediums will let me do my 2m well what if this opened them up then i can go into a standing one go into the aerial attacks for that so just familiarize yourself with what you have for openings or whenever that you actually do make a confirmation, knowing how you can proceed from there. Even if it's something like a Key Blast, can you actually confirm a 2H? Well, you can. So if you want to even go into something like a Kamehameha, well, that's actually a true combo as well. So this is where the blocks, the block stun, I'm sorry, the hit stun, since that's going to be when a confirmation actually comes through, is going to be important for knowing that, hey, do I have enough time after a Key Blast, which you can pay attention right here and see what the gauge is going to be, to actually go in a 2H? Well, I indeed do. So I can do that as an option if that's the block string that I choose to go into. So getting into kind of your first block string to reset what your attacks are actually going to be able to do, let's start incorporating assist into this. So the way that you can do this, and it might be a little tricky at first, so let's set this to block all, and we're not gonna have the reversal portion up just yet. You're going to see in my demonstration, because I know I'm not gonna do it perfectly every time, that the computer will exploit any sort of gaps between whenever that you are going to not call your assist properly, or whenever you're not going to reset your string correctly. So what we want to do basically is go through the string that we've been going through for the light, medium, heavy, 
and then we want to call on an assist to cover that gap so that our heavy can recover and then we can get back into going into the light attacks so as mentioned we're the assist is covering the heavy recovery so that we can go back into the light attack so that we can restart our whole block string so let's start getting into how we can do that so we need to keep in mind and this is going to vary depending on if you're running this team or not so if you have somebody that has a lower startup time for their assists such as goku black where he kind of teleports and then he throws out his key blast vegeta comes out and then goes up and then starts shooting you can see if i call him the same time goku black actually starts shooting a little bit before vegeta even does because the Kamehameha is already out, and then Vegeta actually starts going off for his T-Blast. So you need to keep in mind these timings and practice with your team, whatever that your team may be, so that you can familiarize yourself with how to be able to proceed through block strings and how to cover yourself. So let's kind of show you what a your first block string is going to look like. So something like that, where if we set the settings to guard all and then also have the reversal which that should be it right there or even if we just set him to the quarter circle which i believe that'll be that one that is not that one that if we leave a gap and do this incorrectly that we will get opened up in that way so you need to be careful and there you go, that's a, a good example of a true block string that you can actually do. Is that you can um, go into Goku Black after you go through your light to medium to heavy. Call Goku Black specifically in the middle, excuse me, of your heavy attack actually being wound up. for So during the startup phase into the beginning of the active phase so that he can actually teleport get ready to actually get do the command man and then actually launch it so the timing of it's pretty important but this is a good way that you can actually practice it and see if you're being pretty true now as i mentioned and i'll reiterate it again is that when you're actually against a real opponent unless that they are able to exploit if you leave a, a small number of frames like let's say two to three frames opening in there because two to three frames is such a small gap that it's very very hard for you to eyeball especially with the, a lot of online play which is where i know a ton of you are actually playing so this is more exploitable over actual i was going to say land actually like on console so if you're on the same console and you're playing versus another person side by side or something like that um but just keep that in mind so we'll sh kind of show you that again And then you can't even go into a key blast before you're able to actually safely have a an opening for them to actually exploit. So let's kind of show that with Vegeta, which I believe that you can actually call them out. And then he'll stay blocking. Okay. Because I know if you set the computer to reflect, the computer will start, will start reflecting immediately when Vegeta comes out because of the changes that they have to his assist after like the first few months of the game being out. So. So you see there, we were actually able to cycle through two assists. So if you want to actually take this, I would say beginner block string to the next level, then you can cycle through all of your attacks even again, considering that you have two assists and you understand the timings of them. And this is just cycling through all of your light to medium to heavy attacks. And then depending on who they are exactly, um, you'll need to slightly alter your actual timings for whenever you call them. As you saw that, Vegeta takes a little longer, so just be mindful of that. So let's get into an intermediate block string. Now, why is this one going to be intermediate? Well, this one is going to actually take advantage of the high-low properties of the game. Now, this one is going to have a gap in it, but this is where, when you're playing online, if somebody doesn't notice this, if somebody doesn't exploit this correctly, doesn't know how to punish this in any way, whatever that that may be, then this is going to be a good chance for you to be able to lead into a combo so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to go through our first block string which is going to go through the lights into mediums into the heavy call the assist and then whenever that we are going to be getting into the second phase of our block string we want to incorporate something which is called a sit m it's a universal overhead so the sit m is the forward motion and then the medium if you saw from my first video i have put the numeric annotations for fighting games which i can put down below and that is going to be you holding forward which if you have a 
number pad in front of you, or not in front of you, if you're at your keyboard, for example, and then you have the numbers one, two, three, and then you go up to the next row, four, five, six, and then you go up to the next row, seven, eight, nine. So the sits motion is going to be relative to the player one side, and if you hold forward, and then hit the medium button simultaneously. So you're going to get this overhead. Now, the important kind of properties of this overhead is that that's, this cannot lead into a combo. So if we were to actually set Go, Gohan to block all, not switch and only crouch so he's going to be able to be hit by overheads now you may notice that this overhead and this one look exactly the same but one is with an iad where you will manually input that and then you fall pretty quickly compared to this one which you fall at a slower rate so let us hit him with the 6m and then try to mash light attacks and see if we can do anything and we can't that is because this is going to be neutral on block or I'm sorry, on hit, and then it will be, I believe it's negative on, on block. If it's not negative on block, then it's also neutral, meaning that it is still your turn unless for some reason that you were too slow on pushing the buttons, and then the opponent can't react to that. So let's actually see for that, just to find out for sure. So we actually were able to get in there for him. I believe it's this one that I need to do, though. So you see how we were actually able to have the reversal come out for Gohan after this and after we're mashing our light attacks? And that would be because this is going to be even, meaning that a reversal is going to win a meaty attack, which a meaty is just you constantly throwing out attacks after there's some sort of hit in some way, shape, or form trying to keep your uh, pressure going, whether you're actually supposed to or not. So, so there's a gap again. But so, let us start kind of showing you what this is supposed to look like. So we're not going to have him counter right now, and we're going to have him... Oops, say that and I set it to counter. So we're going to have Gohan set to standing, we'll have him set to switch, and then we'll still kind of show you what this is going to look like. Now the important part for incorporating this into M is consider what I mentioned before in terms of progressing through attacks so that you go from your from your light into a medium into a heavy. Now 6M is going to be a medium attack. So that means that you cannot go back to this attack after you do a heavy. So if you look at my inputs, which are going to be up over here in the corner, you can't go heavy and then mash 6M. There's going to be a huge gap in there. So what you can do is you can do a light and go straight into that. You see how quickly that comes out in comparison to this heavy into trying to go into that. So light into Sitsem is pretty fast. And then you can do light, light into Sitsem. You can do light, light, medium into Sitsem. Light, light, medium, medium, and then into Sitsem. Because that is going to be your third medium that you can do. So let us show you what the first part of the block screen is going to be, which is what we have just learned, throwing in the assist. And then you can do something like that. So this is going to take advantage of making sure that the opponent has to block low because you have a low that comes out and the opponent also has to block high because you are going to hit them with that tit -tam, which is going to be an overhead. So let's consider that the opponent only likes to block low. So we will have them to not switch and we'll have them to crouch and show you kind of how that works. And then you can actually lead into an attack because the sit M is going to be a guard break, which you can actually tell that it will say over here, wherever that we actually are, it's going to say guard break because they're actually still blocking, but because they did not bot the correct way, you are going to open them up. So this should work also in the same way that if you have them standing, but not switch, then that is also technically a guard break, but it's not going to be counted in that same way. So just kind of go through the string one more time. All the assists. And then for that 6M, it's important for the timing for someone like Goku Black. And let's kind of flip this around in terms of who we're actually calling first. So Vegeta takes just a second. So if you call it too slow for Vegeta, then you're actually not going to get that combo. You see how Gohan actually got caught by Vegeta there? So you have to make sure that your timing is correct. You can actually call Vegeta first and then go into this to lead into a combo. With Goku Black, you can call him afterwards. But you want to make sure that you have enough time to be able to go into an attack. So let's call Goku Black first. And then go into that. And then you can do that. 
So the important thing though, is that when you are doing the sit to M, if you hold it forward, then you can't call out an assist. So if you look after I hit the sit to M and after we're already in the air, if you keep holding forward and you're hitting the assist buttons, as you can tell that I'm doing over here, that the assist will not come out. You'll actually end up with something like that, where maybe you'll end up switching a character into the actual uh, gameplay instead of actually calling their assist. So make sure that you are actually resetting the position of your stick, of your uh, directional input to neutral, which is going to be five right in the middle so that you're not pushing any direction after you call the assist so that you can actually call them back out. And then you can lead into a combo such as that. So that is going to be the main strings that I want to get into um, in terms of kind of having you guys go through that. I'll go through everything once more just to kind of wrap this up and I think I actually did a little bit better job of keeping this video down because I had recorded this yesterday and lord that that take forever. So the first block string which is just making sure that you're competent in terms of if the opponent's blocking going through your taps just light medium into heavy if it's someone like Goku you can throw out a key blast and then go into block if someone like Goku block you can do that into a quarter circle forward. You can even end with the heavy. And if you didn't want to do go through block, then you can go into the Vegeta, who can end with the heavy. If you don't want to end with the heavy, you can end with the key blast. If you don't want to end with the key blast, then you can go into a quarter circle forward after that, which I didn't show you that. I'll do it. There you go. And then from there, let us go into somebody like. Or I'm sorry, let's get into calling an assist. And then you can reset yourself. And then getting into the intermediate block string that I had mentioned. And then you can lead into some sort of a tap after that. So the sit M and with the assist, you'll have to play with that in terms of what is going to combo into what. Now with this team, if you are opening up somebody with the sit to M, then with Vegeta, he can actually just lead into a 5M, which is going to be a standing medium because you're resetting yourself after you actually hit them. And then you can go into 2H and then just mash light after you do the 2H so you get a sliding knot down. If you're familiar already with the jump cancels, then you can go up 2H, jump cancel, go into a little bit more of a combo. And then pretty much the same thing with Goku Black since Goku and Goku Black have the same beam assist. So Vegeta is kind of the only person where if he is out and you call the beam assist and open up somebody with that, knowing where that co combo can be converted. Now if you're mid screen, this will vary a bit more because beam assists are, are going to launch the opponent away from you. So if you're to call like that, then you're going to have to follow up with something like a super dash in order to be able to get that. You're not going to be able to just do the standing medium because he's going to fly too far away. Um, Super Saiyan Vegeta is actually going to be somebody that you can do this universally with in terms of anywhere on the screen and then they'll open them up and my timing was a little off there and that you can go into that 5M because they actually stay in place because they're being barraged and, and they're not going to move. So hopefully that was a decent explanation of block strings and things to be careful for in terms of the startup, the active uh, frames for attacks, the recovery, going over bot stuns, hit stuns, being careful with sort of gaps that you have in your streams for vanishes, reflects, reversals, being DPs or level threes, uh, frame traps and how you can kind of cause gaps intentionally, which can bait the opponent into actually being hit if they're mashing with the regular type of attack. And then also, of course, going through the very, very first block stream, the beginner block stream, the intermediate one. Um, I will go more in depth with mitts ups and whatnot as far as for in a later video, but I wanted to keep this one more towards you newer players and make sure that you are able to comprehend exactly what you're supposed to do when an opponent is blocking. So make sure that you give me some feedback on the video. I am still pretty new to making the videos and the, and the guides for all of you, but I believe they're being met with pretty good reception from you all. Um, I've been seeing a ton of positive feedback for the comments and everything like that. But make sure that you give me a thumbs on up or a comment down below. If you have a request for a video or for some other characters that you're having a little bit of problems with and you actually want to ask me personally, I mean, please feel more than free to do so. I would gladly reply to your videos. Um, I might start getting into more character specific type of videos as well a little bit later on down the road, but I'm trying to just focus mostly on the beginner aspect of it for right now. But hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.